Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. Wonderful month with an amazing theme, the blessings of Thanksgiving. And today is such an awesome presence and atmosphere of Thanksgiving in this place. Hallelujah. And I believe it's going to continue. And you see, it's not only meant for the gathering when we come. It's supposed to be part of our lives. Hallelujah. It's to, to stir us up so that when we leave this place, we would have learned Sunday after Sunday, Tuesday after Tuesday, all our services, you know, how to continually give praise and thanks to God. Hallelujah. And so we shall continue in thanksgiving. Amen. There's this song that all through the month has been on my heart. I will sing it at a point. We will sing it at a point in time in the service, God willing. And uh, it's a song that was made popular by Don Muen. But when I started thinking about the song and I did decide to do a bit of research, I like to find the story behind the song. Uh, I found out that it was not even written by him. You know, when he first wrote it, it was said, author unknown. And then the author, author of that song or the writer, you know many years back when integrity had made the song popular he saw it he's still alive actually and then um and we'll talk about his story towards the end of the the service and, and then he told integrity and i like their name integrity because of their integrity they 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 attributed it to him later on and he said i wrote this song and he gave the circumstances before then the song had become popular in almost every language in the world like many hymns and it's the song give thanks with a grateful heart you know and the title of my message is give thanks with a grateful heart amen you know and i asked myself each time i i, I sang it and i thought about it and i was like but give thanks is already being grateful give thanks with a grateful heart I feel like we should sing it one round. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks mm. to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. So I asked myself, but why with a grateful heart? It suggests that we could give thanks, not really from the depth of our hearts. And I remembered that it was clearer when I was much younger, and I'm sure it happened to many of us. We probably say that also sometimes to our children. We teach to be grateful when they give you something you say what thank you it's like how are you mechanically we say what 
So when somebody gives you something, you say what? Then you whisper to your brother or sister. Have we been there before? And then when there are a number of children and you are sharing something, and then you start, like will happen on Christmas Day for some families, and I prophesy to happen for everybody, that somebody will give you a gift. You will say amen. Me, I'm saying amen for myself. <laughs> amen. It's beautiful. Hallelujah. It's a season of giving. Amen. And I think it's a good point to talk about giving thanks with a grateful heart right from the inside. So somebody gives you a pen on Christmas. Yeah, child, yeah, now also pen. That's not with a grateful heart. But you said thank you. Amen. And the person left feeling you had said thank you but your heart and your mouth may not have been consistent and so the children are there and then you are sharing and you open and then you give joel he likes ps4 so maybe it's the latest cd for it then you call another one thank you thank you thank you then you call another and the person has already said thank you very happy then you call another one and maybe you give something in his eyes it looks better than his either his thank you starts changing or the second one looks and says thank you and then you sense that the thank you is not complete and then usually one person who is a parent who is observing myself will use the will use, usually use the phrase hey be grateful does that sound familiar be grateful be at least grateful but the person has said thank you we recognize that the thank you was with reservation today we will say thank you without reservation amen we saw that the thank you was with reservation so do you remember telling somebody be grateful has somebody told you before be grateful when you thought you were giving thanks and that's what it is about give thanks we do it as part of our worship we do it as part of our you know yeah our worship as christians but not only for today not only for this month but we hope and trust that we will live here with the things that we've been learning this month to deliberately give thanks with our hearts also being grateful tell your neighbor be grateful So we often say that when we observe a certain dissatisfaction or disappointment which is tainting the the thanksgiving so the thanksgiving is coming but inside the heart there's a level of disappointment there is a certain level of dissatisfaction because now we should share something different Anna. you remember that on the tv you were expecting something else you were looking forward to something else but we will learn very soon that we need to learn to be thankful for what we have which is more than zero amen to be thankful for it so we can train ourselves to have a life of true thanksgiving if we focus enough to see god manifested in both our good and what to us is not our is, is not our so good situations if we can focus enough to see god manifested in every situation be it what we call good or what we do not call good if we can see him in it it changes the whole equation amen it changes the whole equation somebody wrote and the person said what is on the other side of the equation is what matters most it's not what is on your side of the equation god is on the other side of it. so your equation may be two plus one it may be four divided by three but you don't know what is on the other side of the equation the equal sign and the result belongs to him amen so what is on the other side of the equation is what is most important and that is god amen and his purposes so 
when we give thanks we should give thanks from the depth of our hearts we should give thanks unreservedly amen and we can find many reasons to give thanks unreservedly the message bible writes first thessalonians 5 verse 16 to 18 like this i don't know if you have it but i'll read it be cheerful no matter what pray all the time thank god no matter what happens let's be sure your neighbor is hearing it tell your neighbor no matter what i'll start again be cheerful no matter what that's amazing that's the formula he's giving us give thanks with a great fire be cheerful no matter what pray all the time thank god no matter what happens could it be that because we are also not praying with a thankful heart our hearts are always filled with memories this is the way god wants you who belong to christ jesus to live if we go to psalm 30 which i want to read also from the message we'll read more or less the whole psalm inside this psalm we find i find it very interesting i see many reasons to give thanks and i believe that everybody in this place can identify with this verse or with this portion of scripture at least some portion of it the psalmist said i will exalt you lord for you rescued me i believe that somebody has been rescued this year amen i will exalt you for you rescued me many times we've had people come up here and give testimonies there was a near fatal accident but god delivered me you probably didn't get that job you wanted but can you remember that he delivered delivered you from an accident why are you still thinking about the job you didn't get what about your life which you got amen when we reflect we can be thankful you rescued me you refused to let my enemies triumph over me you may still be in battle with your enemies but they have not triumphed over you <laughs> amen and they will not triumph over you so stay in that battle with thanksgiving and stay strong in that battle because you are coming out because god with you is greater than all against you and sometimes the enemy knows our weakness better than we master it ourselves so we get weak we let go and then we give up the battle like a football team that allows and just say we won't play again or some somewhere i know uh, opposition says okay not do anything again take everything you want to take but we don't do that with the devil hallelujah oh lord my god i cried to you for help and you restored my health i believe that there's a testimony of good health in this house amen or health on a good progress amen give thanks it's amazing and i think it's very i feel that it's much more present in our culture african etc i don't know but we we give a lot of attention to the pain and to the negative hallelujah and we see very little probably it's it could it be one of the reasons why we are not as creative because we are not seeing opportunities and we always see what is wrong today may you lift your eye to what is right hallelujah because it's from there that god will lift you up it's from there that god will show you another way hallelujah amen We thank God for the healings that he has brought. You brought me up from the grave. 
oh lord some were near death situations some were destined for the grave but god brought us out of it you kept me from falling into the pit of death sing to the lord all you godly ones praise his holy name for his anger lasts only a moment but his favor lasts a lifetime amen another version here she says he gets angry once in a while but across a lifetime there is only love will you be angry and upset and towards a father or a mother who through your 20 year lifetime has been angry with you five times but has loved you so much with so much unimaginable love all the rest of our time so yes he's angry with us sometimes but that's a father that's a good father he gets angry once in a while and we feel it we feel like he's turned his back maybe but across a lifetime if you remember this part you will give thanks across a lifetime look at your lifetime check how old you are and check his mercies they are renewed every morning and his faithfulness is great towards you but across a lifetime there is only love the message continues to say the nights of crying your eyes out give way to days of laughter somebody say amen that's prophetic the nights of crying your heart out give your eyes out give way to days of laughter amen verse 6 back to nlt when i was prosperous i said nothing can stop me now your favor oh lord made me as secure as a mountain then you turned away from me and i was shattered and sometimes we feel like that i cried out to you you still have something to cry out to <laughs> i still have someone to cry out to amen amen I cried out to you, O oh Lord. I begged the Lord for mercy, saying, What will you gain if I die, if I sink into the grave? Can my dust praise you? Can it tell of your faithfulness? Hear me, O oh Lord, and have mercy on me. Help me, O oh Lord. Verse 11, he says, You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. May I announce to somebody that I don't know what your situation is, but I can tell you that joyful dancing is on its way. And you better dance it before you see it because you know it. Amen. Hallelujah. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. You are going into a time of great joy hallelujah amen that i might sing praises to you and not be silent i each time i read this verse and i like the king james rendition i remember the first time i really got a i mean this verse really struck my attention was 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 when reverend Imam when we were way back in dance but preached on this verse one time when we we're talking about thanksgiving and he says don't the title of the message was don't let your praise be silent i don't know if anybody remembers but i still remember you remember Mama T. don't let your praise be silent i hope this message will mark you like that message marked me i don't know how many years now uh, it must be at least 30 years now hallelujah don't let your praise be silent he says and to the end that my praise will not be silent that's what the king james says hallelujah that i might sing praises to you the nlt says and not be silent oh lord my god i will give thanks forever amen that my praise will not be silent may your praise of your god not be silent beloved don't talk about where you know uh, you, I, and don't talk about the things that are not going well and let everybody think that you are such a desperate person and you don't have a god may the praise of your god not be silent talk about his manifold deeds talk about his goodness talk about his messes it's because of the lord's messes that we are not consumed great is his faithfulness hallelujah 
we must give thanks always for what the lord has done and that we are we, we are good at it amen i mean we are able to do that for what he has done we should also give thanks in spite of what we don't see or what we don't understand you don't say amen in spite of what we don't see faith is what the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not yet seen by it those people are fathers they obtained a good report they died still hoping still believing still trusting still praising and they said he's making it he's changing i see myself changed i don't know what you see about me but i see myself elevated so you people see you down but i see myself elevated when daniel and his colleagues were in the den he saw something that made him go there he believed something that made him continue to bow and take the risk of going there and when people were pitying god opened their eyes to see what they had seen amen so we praise him even when we do not see with our natural vision and we do not understand we also praise him in anticipation in hope of what he will do what we look forward to that is the assurance which comes from his word it may be a word that you read it may be a word that he speaks to you like a rhema but brother hold on to it sister hold on to it and give him thanks amen he might have given you a word maybe you were reading the scriptures and you fell upon the scripture that says that your children will be like olive plants all around you but it doesn't look like your real situation but you hear the spirit the angel of the lord speaking to you and saying that's your message is believing god for a child who is older than sarah here bible sarah it's a nice point to laugh <laughs> yeah but the bible says against hope they were they kept on hoping you see our world has been it probably was a bit easier for them in their time i'm beginning to think so actually because the when i look at when i was like 15 to 20 and I look at now the world is just the, the contamination of our mind and that's why you should be careful what you read where you spend your time as a man thinketh so is he I mean the consumer generation that we are in within 30 years i mean we have believed that we can consume what we don't even have we weren't like that before and everything is about how much you have and people are building mansions and dying before they even live in it and they gave no love to the world around them that's what our society is making and we are in a rat race and a struggle because all that matters is what it looks like around you and that neighbor has this and i need to get that and all our prayers about what we need to have and and how we are looking in the face of how things are so it's hard pray more for your children it's hard amen auntie abby his heart amen blessings we talk about the blessings of thanksgiving i believe that 
when we develop an attitude of giving thanks no matter what in spite of for who he is because of what we see that we don't see i believe that we have a blessing of peace amen we have a blessing of peace we are too troubled nowadays we will have a blessing of peace Philippians 4, that was what I started reading. It says, the King James says, Be anxious about nothing, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known unto God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The NLT says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, this is the second time that we are seeing prayer punched in there. Instead, so he's saying, when the worrying is coming change your attitude amen instead don't worry about anything instead in its place when worry is coming and it will come at us in its place pray he says about everything pray about everything tell god what you need and thank him already for all he has done amen then you will experience god's peace which exceeds anything we can understand if you do it like he says it you will catch that revelation because everything may not look well but he says which exceeds everything we can understand that's why the world doesn't understand it so there you are in that difficult situation like paul and silas and then you are praising you are giving thanks from the depth of your heart even for that situation because of what you see because you say that god you are having your way in this situation amen he says the peace of god will flood your hearts in a way that beats every mind amen hallelujah the songwriter the hymn writer said oh what peace we often forfeit or forfeit oh what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to god in what in prayer prayer is not a microwave probably you say but pastor yeah i take it to him in prayer but it stays too long time is part of prayer tell me but time is part of prayer that's really the test whether you are praying amen if you just went through a request and then after two days you are you are tired of waiting that's not praying that's not praying praying includes waiting amen we are waiting on him that's why we continue to pray they that wait upon the lord that's prayer they shall do what the weakness will become strength they wait upon the lord but you're not waiting like one who is waiting in despair you are waiting because you know job said in in job 14 14 i believe he said all of my appointed days i will wait and then he was emphatic and prophetic he said until he didn't say if until my change comes so he knew his change will come all of my appointed days so it's part of prayer so oh what needless pain we bear oh because we do not carry it to the lord in prayer and wait on him wait upon the lord i say wait on him the psalmist said wait on him don't go and marry and ask him to endorse it because all your classmates have married you will have needless pain you will forfeit peace those who wait upon the lord 
they have peace. Life is a long journey. It's long. As you grow, you see it more and more. You wish that you had the mind of 50 when you were 20. But God gives wisdom to them that ask it. Amen. So, we get peace. I ask, what can you do about the past? Somebody tell me. Somebody who can fix the past, tell me. Isn't that where we keep on our attention, most of it? Ah, boy, you wait. I don't hear me. What do you hear me? Amen. You do, you finish. To John Hwate. Think about yourself. Go forward. My brother-in-law has always said, he said, Nya omwe wiana na so mwa fa no. Omwa fa. Nya ka no. Ye be bon ho bai. Aso. Chale bi tam fi say, "Hey God, that I didn't die in that situation." Hey, they do me like this and I can still be in harvest here giving praise. Mo we si no, we save you. I want some shame. And then move forward. Everybody say, I want some shame. It is. And move forward. It's, it's, it's something you have to develop. You have to work at it. You have to work at it. You have to work at it. You can't do anything about the past. And stop whining, reflecting. And ta, 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 you can't do it. If you want to do, learn some lessons, write them down. And then move on. Hallelujah. Rather give thanks and look into the future with hope. One of the blessings is that your faith is constantly renewed when you are giving thanks. Because you are giving thanks for all things. For all things. The Bible says that which we already have, why do we hope for it? We don't in the book of Romans. He says you don't hope for it. But the thing that you don't yet have, that's what you hope for. And so hope is an element of faith hallelujah so when you are giving thanks i thank you lord that this situation at work ha, they are doing what they would do but it will never submerge me because you are the lifter up of my head you will exalt me you will lift me up as you are doing that what's happening faith because you are giving thanks use thanksgiving prophetically hallelujah use thanksgiving i thank you that they will come a thousand at my which one is ten thousand left or right but a thousand at my is it right and ten thousand at my right but only with my, my eyes i will see them i will just see them keke, but i will behold the salvation of the lord speak it your faith that's the blessing if you are not giving thanks, you are always morose. Don't I look like Mr. Bean? You are just always morose. So, you know, give thanks. When you give thanks, you infect the lives of people. Amen. We don't say deny your situation. Know it, but give God thanks and, and, and believe him for what he says he will do. Amen. Jesus walking on earth he gave thanks always 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 in all things for all things father i thank you that you hear me then he starts to pray amen so your faith is constantly renewed because hope maketh not ashamed romans 5 3 to 5 we can rejoice too and know that i'm if i don't say i'm going to king james i'm staying in nlt today we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation 
verse 5. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. The King James says, And hope maketh not ashamed. When you said that. This when you said that. It means that you will never be ashamed. I want to ask. You will never be ashamed. Hope maketh not ashamed. For we know how dearly God loves us. Oh, oh. That's why do not make ashamed. We know how dearly He loves us. Because He has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with His love. So you feel it. You know He loves you. You know, you know He loves you. He will never let you down. Stand on that and give thanks. And give thanks. It gives you victory over the enemy. Thanksgiving. I'm talking about the blessings. I'm talking about four of them. I'm on number three. It gives you bless uh, blessings. Yeah, it gives you blessings. The blessings give you blessings. It gives you victory over the enemy. Another popular verse for me. And I remember 19, probably 88 at Calvary Road Camp Meeting. Pastor Gales was preaching on this message. And this verse became engrafted in my spirit and it's still there i will read the king james he says and in nothing terrified by your adversary for this is a evident a evident token of distraction or a sign of distraction to him but for you it is one of salvation and that through god it's a, very, it's a bit challenging to understand it in King James English. But let me read the NLT to you. He says, don't be intimidated in any way by your enemies. Amen. Don't. It's a weapon that I have used very well. And it's very powerful. You see, the day that you, the moment you get an I get skirmishes of intimidation and fear, but this thing wakes me up always. You know, when you get afraid, don't let the fear consume you. There's something in you that wakes up above that fear. Staring it up. Stare it up. He says, in nothing. Be terrified. And I have decided that it's a holy law for me. Nothing in nothing be terrified by your enemy and he says that that because what is the devil trying to do he can do nothing except to push you to doubt and to lose faith that's the end of the story that's all that's his trick his trick is to leave you a hmm and me as for this trouble it's too much for me i can't bear it again what the, the, and then you are la, 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 and then you start drifting away and that's it he says that don't be terrified in any way by your enemies or by the devil this will be a sign this is where i'm coming to to them or to him that they are going to be destroyed so i said that it gives you victory by your enemy your thanksgiving your thanksgiving from your heart a grateful heart it is a sign when the enemy sees that this thanksgiving is coming from somewhere on the word of god against him using God's word, he said, he, he, your attitude alone, he knows that this battle I have lost it. When you give thanks, it's a sign of victory. It's a sign of victory. When Paul and Silas were giving thanks, it was a sign of victory. Did the victory come? Yes. Give thanks. Give thanks. I say, give thanks. It's a sign of victory practice it you will see that though you will go through fire and though you will go through the valleys you will always come back on top because you have the sign of victory and you have the victor but that you are going to be saved even though it's a sign of destruction to him for you it is the opposite sign it is a sign of salvation and it is it's a sign that you are going to be saved even by God himself. Nobody else. God himself. God himself. The final point is that the, one of the blessings you have is you have a rich indwelling 
of the word of God. People who give thanks, they are connected to the word. Because, Charlie, your base is not the things around you. It has to be something else. So when they are always connected back to the word. And if you become a thanks giver, you will find from the word reasons to give thanks. You will love his word. Oh, how I love your commandments. Amen. Because they are the source of your hope. You would say like David, a rich indwelling of the word of God becomes a blessing for you. One who loves to sing his praise and give thanks is drawn to the word, which is the source of his strength. His songs of hope. Colossians 3 verse 16 to 17 Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Don't fill your lives with bad news. Fill it with the message of Christ in all its richness regarding your marriage, regarding your career, regarding your ministry. Fill it with God's word. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Don't counsel each other with your own head. Get into the word. Speak his word speak his word amen sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to god with thankful hearts today even if it's five minutes we'll sing some songs with thankful hearts and whatsoever you do or say do it as a representative of the lord jesus again giving thanks through him to god the father thankfulness somebody wrote is a key to your life you know you can be living but you are not living you can be dead alive hmm? thanksgiving is a key to your life you can recover your life you can rediscover your life the zest of life the desire the hope the strength of life it comes he says it is the key that turns your situation around because it changes you that's that's what happened you see the devil it's not about the situation it's about you in the situation amen it's about you in the situation and so thanksgiving changes you in that situation it changes your outlook it changes your attitude there is power in a thankful heart. Thanksgiving brings contentment. Amen. You are complete. You are satisfied. An attitude of thanksgiving accepts and embraces God's will. And he says, begin to thank God for all the blessings he has given. Instead of dwelling on the negative. Amen. I like something I read somewhere. Discontent contentment dries up the soul amen stop being discontented with about everything and anything yes doesn't mean that there are some things that do not make us unhappy no they are there yes they are there but why is that your focus amen <laughs> nobody's saying there are no there are no things that don't make you happy but why is that one your focus amen May we find the things that make us happy. Reasons why we can give praise. May we find things for which we can be thankful. The gift of life. I told you I did a research on, on give thanks. And it was written by, in 1978 by Henry Smith. The song was his only published worship song out of 300 songs. He was born in 52 and he's still alive. So out of 300 unpublished compositions, only give thanks with a grateful heart was published. And even that, not by him. It was written after Smith had trouble finding work after graduating from university. What a common trouble. <laughs> He also suffered from a degenerative condition that eventually left him legally blind. And I never heard that phrase before, so I searched it up. For me, if you are blind, you are blind. 
but it's not true he was legally blind uh, where is I'm a, my doctor I'm a quantum, you are there okay legally blind so they said when you're legally blind I mean you have 2200 vision that's what I found out and it's basically in feet so 200 uh, feet what one person can see clearly an object the one who is considered legally blind is the one who can see that same object only when he is 20 feet or less from that object amen so then you will not be allowed probably to drive on your own and things like that okay i learned something i don't know if you've learned something henry smith must have seen life this way god's side of the equation outweighs whatever is on the opposite side that's how he saw life at least that's what the words he wrote indicate god is the all of existence so that i am called to give thanks and he did that six times in that short song when i'm done here on planet earth all that will matter is what lies ahead in god's presence that must have been alluring for henry smith who was struggling to find steady work despite having just earned his college degree when he says the poor are rich in give thanks that's an echo from his difficulty in finding work so he didn't he thought that he had found work there but he said well you call me poor i look poor but he found out that the poor are rich and so he began, began to believe god that his situation was going around turning around his eyesight was also failing because of a degenerative condition that would eventually leave him legally blind certainly a weakness that he expressed in the song as his eyesight faded now listen to the positive part thankfully theological training and that's the bible the truth about the bible informed him that god's side of the equal sign was what mattered i say to you again your condition may be challenging but god's side of the equal sign is what matters he says another part of his life further motivated the song that leapt from his heart now he began to count the positive things like another songwriter said count your blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the lord has done he said he had found someone to love yes i'm not getting a job um i my eyes are degenerating i'm now called legally blind but his good side was that there was a young lady who still loved him and he said i found somebody to love i can give thanks <laughs> amen maybe you have a beloved but you don't have a job and anytime you meet her all you're saying is <laughs> complaining about why you don't have a job give thanks <laughs> you meet her you pray together and say i give thanks to god for you and as i thank god for you god is going to give us a job our future will be great you know a little secret i prayed almost exactly the same prayers oh it's true i did I? Where, where were you praying those prayers at the garden sir okay <laughs> so pray it i mean i didn't have a job you want to follow me okay let's pray for job <laughs> amen so think about things to thank god for and he said for his future wife he had found someone to love his future wife he thanked god and he was grateful to be through school even with his deteriorating eyesight how many of us would see that that he could finish school with his eyes deteriorated he said i thank you god And to be back home in a church he loved in Williamsburg, Virginia. He said, I thank you, God. Thank God for this family. Thank God for this church. People are in your situation which may be very, maybe even worse. But they don't even have this, this, this comfort of a family. This guy spoke to me a lot. He thanked God for his church and I'm back in this lovely place. Thank you, God. You come from Abroche, you don't have a job. All you do is complain. Thank God that you are in Harvest Chapel. 
and that here there's a beautiful atmosphere and God will make a way you can praise God if God was all Henry Smith had in 1978 he could be praised and yet he provided even more he said if only I had you and all these things have been enumerated I didn't have you still were worthy of my praise but he considered himself having much more oh generation of today may we be thankful with a grateful heart and the song resounds still in Henry Smith's hometown and the globe today are you thankful in your present circumstances are you thankful for your salvation even if in this earth there is wahala you want to go to hell too how often have we even thanked god that we are saved somebody sent me an amazing clip by Rana bonke with deep revelations about what salvation means and he said in the garden of eden we say we have found god he said nobody finds god god finds you he has been searching for you from long in the garden of Eden, he said he left them in all the beauty he had done and then and then the enemy came and messed them up and he said quickly god started shouting says angels where are you somebody has touched my people and he, he said god went there they didn't come and look for him he went there to check what's going on so thank god for your salvation he found you he found you amen are you thankful for your friends you're always complaining about the bad ones thank god for the good ones there are some good friends you have are you thankful for your job you want to be ceo but thank god that you are clerk today and because you are a good clerk you become a good officer and because you're a good officer you become a good supervisor and because you're a good supervisor you become a good manager and you will be the one that will set the record from nowhere to become general manager give god thanks give god thanks with a grateful heart are you thankful for the way god made you and, uh, and i wish i had the ear of pastor Quasi. they used to laugh at me that my ears were big some of the children god has given me also still laugh at my ear and my nose but be thankful for who god made you are you god do you know the plan you are thinking about something what, what do you know what do you know if you are tall praise god if you are not too tall praise god, god knows what he is doing the person who will sing with me give thanks you come 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 so let's give thanks there are many reasons to give thanks and the blessings of thanksgiving will flow in our lives the peace of god will flood our hearts in a way that we don't understand may this be our life let it not be a service let it not be a message i pray that it will be our life it will be our lives in jesus name rise up thank you for listening to the message visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.